gotta play. You gotta play the high one. Yeah. My name is Joe Fadrizi, and I've been coming here for about. It's. I've been here for 18 years, and probably 14 of the 18 I've been coming here. So I started coming here when I was nine. I'm 27 now. There's no other camp or place like this. I've been to several fiddle camps and nothing is comparable to Bethel. You go eat in a fest hall, it's all homemade food, and then you stay in old houses. I mean, that's what they are. They're old colony houses that you stayed in. And it's a really neat feeling because you're actually in an old time, you know, 1800s, 1700s town, and you're learning music that they probably played here at one time. Whether you go somewhere else to a camp that's in the middle of the city, it's just a different feeling, I guess. Yeah. I grew up in Bethel. Uh, this is my home. My dad grew up here. My great great grandparents were here during the colony era. So I have ties that take me back a long way. Bethel's population is 120, so if you blink, you miss it. It's located on Highway 15, which is the connecting highway between Edina and Shelbina, off of Highway 36. Bethel was settled uh, in 1844 by Dr. Wilhelm Kyle, and uh, he was from, at that time, from, lived in Pennsylvania, and he grew up in the Methodist faith and he was a very charismatic person, a leader, and so his dream was to build a, a place where people could live by the golden rule and everyone could get along. So from Pennsylvania, he sent some scouts westward uh, to find the perfect location, and that was Bethel. They settled in Bethel mainly because it's near water, and they knew they'd have to have water for power. And so the North River is right to the south of Bethel. The scouts came and they located Bethel and then went back and told Dr. Kyle, I have, we have the perfect place. And so Dr. Kyle gathered his followers and they headed west. And they settled here in Bethel. The German band was so important to the colony days because the colonists, uh, well, obviously had little form of entertainment, so music was the entertainment, and the band would play every weekend or every Saturday night. But for every festival, the band led a parade to Dr. Kyle's house, which is about two and a half miles east of here, and uh, the Schellenbaum would lead the parade, but everyone, all the residents, would walk to Alem, Dr. Kyle's home. And the third story of Alem was a ballroom. And so they danced and they partied all night. And then the next morning they would walk back. <laughs> It's more scrapbooky type things. And this one, yeah, look at this one. Third Dance to the Fiddle. In 1983, there were some musicians that gathered here just for a jam session. And 
they thought, well, wouldn't it be cool to have some kind of a festival where we were pretty much into the festivals in the 80s. And wouldn't it be neat to bring people in and let musicians join together in jam sessions and, uh, and enjoy the fiddle music? So in 1983, that was basically the first camp, and it was more of a jam session. Charlie Walton was uh, the main one who sort of got it started. And of course, Charlie has come back to be a master at fiddle camp. and. So that camp started, and then from there it just, it grew. In-person mentors are great because you have that person, that connection with somebody. If you're just learning from YouTube and recordings, that is also phenomenal. I mean, I've done that myself, you know, growing up. I listen to recordings or go on YouTube and search videos and learn different styles. But you don't, you don't have that personal connection, like where did this song come from or why do you play it this way and not that way? And before I was coming here, and even when I was coming here, I didn't have those strong connections yet until I grew older and then, you know, became more friends with people. And I would be playing something one way and then I would come here and they'd be like, no, why are you doing that? This is how it's supposed to be. Kids will be sitting under a tree jamming or practicing, actually. So when they're not in a private lesson, which there's 18 kids this year and, and uh, nine masters, so there are nine private lessons going on at that time. The ones who are not in a private lesson are in the barn and then in group sessions according to their skill. But they're rotating through those masters every 30 minutes. Get, get close, oh, you guys. The back row, get close to your face. Your face is on the shadows. How about a smile? Brownie! <laughs> this is beautiful. You guys look great. My name is Amanda Arbuckle. Uh, I'm from Columbia, Missouri, and this is my sixth year at Bethel. There's way too many songs in the week for me to learn all at once, so I have to record them and then slowly learn them throughout the year. I'm Mason Herbold, and I'm from Hallsville, Missouri, and this is my first year at Bethel. It's just a place where everyone is just so nice and encouraging, and you get to play music, which is one of my favorite things to do. I'm Olivia, I'm from Bellevue, Nebraska, and I've been coming to Bethel for five years. My favorite tune is probably uh, When Shoppers Break Down. Bill Cheatham. Alice Bluegown from Kenny Appleby, and that's, it's a very good tune. Do you think you want to be uh, one of the teaching masters when you're older? Uh, I mean, that would be cool. I don't think I'm quite like a master yet, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, 
John Williams uh, from Madison, Missouri. I started going to the Bethel Youth Fiddle Camp. I think it was 1991. I was nine years old. It was my first night away from home, first week away from home. Uh, pretty scary experience for the first night, and but I didn't couldn't hardly get me to leave by the time the week was over. And so here it is a few decades later and now I'm teaching at the same place that sparked my love for Missouri Fiddling. Kids my age that were interested in such a unique hobby, athletes, math nerds, cheerleaders, homeschooled kids, all hanging out and spending time together and sharing their life experiences over one week, all brought together by this really unique traditional art. It's pretty surreal sitting in the same chair looking across and realizing that I'm becoming that old guy teaching the teaching the kid. You know, the history behind the tune, how to make the tune sound a certain way, and we've been really blessed the last several years, you know, everybody is anxious to get started from day one when they roll in Sunday afternoon. As soon as I get home from from camp, I'm already planning on on the next one. It's just, it's just you know, part of life. Yeah. What's the best part about it? Yeah. Well, you've been getting pretty. You've been getting a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Kenny is the pillar. Uh, I actually met Kenny uh, before I started going. It would have been a year, year before I started going. I met Kenny at the fiddle contest that we used to have at the end of the camp. Kenny's just been a fixture since day one with. The fiddle camp and anything involving Bethel. It's, uh, you know, he was playing guitar and he would teach guitar and, and then in the last few years he's been teaching his very unique repertory of fiddle tunes, which he plays some of the best old pop standards and some of the most interesting waltzes with all of the complicated chords. Him stepping in and teaching has been great because he might seem big and gruff as an old farmer in his bib overalls, but he has such a way of relating those tunes to those those students and it's just, you know, those kids, uh, you know, Kenny's their, their favorite. How y'all done, Swarm? So after the kids like go, we have our dance and they go to sleep, that is like prime time for getting together and playing tunes for the three hours or four hours that we get to actually hang out and play together. We're together all day teaching and you know helping kids and if we get a break we'll run off and play a few tunes here and there. But at night we get to sit inside, relax, there's no stress, it's just we're here to play music and that's what we're going to do for the next you know three hours.
who was a, a master fiddler, said you, uh, the fiddle gives the dancer a reason to put their foot down. And so dancing is uh, a huge part of fiddle music. And here we do the old time square dancing. We even teach the students to call if they want to learn to call. Because many of them will go home to their homes and they may not have that support fiddle family there. Uh, and so it's important for them to you know, keep this going. That's why we do it, I guess. And here we go. And step, step. generation who enjoyed the fiddling music and that music is kind of it's sad but they're dying out and so you're coming in with new generations so that's the big thing is we have to promote this we'll go from having 35 students for a couple of years back down to 12 and then this year we're at 19 and it's just awesome if we see them one year we we know we're gonna see them for the next several until they are old enough that they can't return and then you know sometimes we'll see those at the adult camp that we started having and then sometimes, like Joe Fedrizzi, you know, comes back and teaches as a master. We have uh, campers that, that keep that old time music alive. And the masters are getting younger, so they're going to keep it for years to come. We're all better, better musicians because of it, you know, whether we're teaching or we're learning. And we're all still learning. Thank you, John. Got ready. Sure we are. <laughs> yeah. Circle to the left. And back to the right. And with your partner, do so. With your corner, element left. Back to your partner, right hand, shake the wide. Hand over hand, right left hand. Meet your partner with a swing. And promenade. Now, a couple number ones gonna balance and swing. And right hand, lady by the right. Partner by the left. 
opposite by the right. And the right hand lady by the left. Now partner by the right and your corner by the left. Go sit over your partner's all. Left to your corner, element left. Back to your partner, right left, grand hand over hand. Now promenade back to your home place. Couple number two's gonna balance and swing. Check number two out to the right. Right hand lady by the right. Now partner by the left. And opposite by the right. Now right hand lady by the left. And partner by the right. Corner by the left. And do si -do, your partner's all. <laughs> Going out, Dan. That's it. Thank your partner. Thank you, partner. Thank your set and thank the band. Thank you, band.